Hi, welcome to the Andy's Ergen Reviews here on YouTube. £129 UK and for that you get a bolt action, dual magazine, single shot tray, CO2 pistol with a claim 430 feet per second. And much more. So, is it a bargain or just a cheap gun? Finding that out is today's mission. Should I choose to accept it? Welcome to AAR On Air. Today we're going to be looking at the Webley Nemesis, the latest offering from, not surprisingly, Webley. First, I should point out that I love it when a company does something different, when they break the mould, so to speak. Now, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So, let's see about this flip around twin magazine system on this nemesis. Mission accomplished or mission improbable? Let's do the walk around after all the initial excitement. Firstly then, all black and all plastic. Well, pretty much all plastic, apart from the bolt action and the rifled barrel. After saying that, this particular plastic has a really good feel to it. Not flimsy, Actually, far from it. It feels very solid and weighty. Even the two-stage trigger on this feels comfortable with its shape and finish, with a really nice pull weight of just north of two pounds. Probably because it isn't required to do any of the usual indexing that so many CO2 pistols are expected to do nowadays. Anyway, back to the walk around. Overall length then is just under 25 centimetres or about 10 inches. Not the biggest of pistols, but certainly not one of the most compact ones either. It carries most of its length up front, as does its weight. Both of these are because the CO2 is not stored in the handle on this one, it's under the barrel. More of that later. Overall, a pleasing look to it, with the ventilation type cutouts around the front of the barrel in what would normally be a top slider. No such action here though. There is, however, a threaded barrel end for a silencer which, when fitted, makes a big difference. And if you can get one thin enough to allow you to use the sights, then it's pretty cool. But I shouldn't worry too much if you can't get one thin enough because you can always put a laser on the rail at the bottom, which is quite sizeable. Moving back, we come to that chunky plastic trigger guard, which flows into the ambidextrous grip with a thumb and forefinger recess for comfort which does indeed work well in left or right-handed shooting. Under the bottom of the grip is a slide-out, which doubles up as the hex key for the loading of the CO2. Once this slide is removed, the dual rotary magazine drops itself out from within the grip. If you don't want to use this, you can always use the single-shot tray which is supplied in the box. This is very simple and just slots into the top easily. The bolt action is like the pistol grip ambidextrous. It can be removed and refitted on the other side. The safety on this one is nice. It is simple, sure, and in the right place not caught up in the trigger or requiring the loss of any fingernails or a full set of snap-on tools to actually use. Just simple and sure-footed above the trigger. 
and it can be applied either side with finger or thumb with that satisfying click. Shows white for safety, red for fire. Let's just go back to that CO2 fitting then. It is an easy process of unscrewing the front under the barrel using that supplied tool. Drop in your CO2 and refit. And that should be good for at least 30 full power shots. Then you need to load up the magazine, which Webley call a tandem self-indexing magazine. I would call it plastic and adequate for the job. Not amazing and not rubbish, just does its job. My experience is that you will get best results from it by indexing it with the front of the gun pointing down. That ultimately lets gravity help. The other thing you'll need is to make sure it clicks all the way home or it will become a little annoying and tries to jam itself. Not the gun's fault, but something to get into the habit of for getting your best results. Loading this magazine up then. Well, it's simplicity itself. None of the silly rotate all the way round and putting them in backwards, which is the usual Webley routine. Just simply drop in, turn, drop the next one, turn, and so on, until they're all full. Now I've tried various fuels in this and it was happily firing most things. After saying that, I wouldn't get over cocky and try putting any fancy pointed stuff in. Apart from the fact that they're pretty useless things anyway, a standard Diablo will fit best and do the job better too. Power figures then. Well, Webley claim 420 feet per second figure. Not a power figure. So I put it through the chrono as usual with 7.33 grain lead JSBs. It produced a maximum of 437 feet per second, which equates to 3.11 foot pounds or 4.22 joules. So yes, it is capable of the 420 feet per second. In fact, it's capable of more. In fact, when I put the alloy pellets in, which are only 5.56 grains, it hit a maximum of 483 feet per second. But because these are so lightweight, it only equates to 2.88 foot-pounds or 3.91 joules. Nonetheless, it did achieve the stated claim, and beyond in fact. Mission accomplished then? Well, not quite. You see, I started this test with two Webley Nemesises, or should it be Nemesis I? Anyway, I started with two. One, this, the 0.177, and the other, a 0.22. Great, I thought, a good comparison. Well, I got three shots through the 2.2 before the main seal blew, and back it went to Webley which became the mission impossible part, I suppose. Well, in all the reviews I've done, sooner or later, one of them was gonna let go. It just happened to be the 2.2. The 177 I've been using has had no problem at all, and I've put quite a few rounds through it over the couple of weeks that I've had it. Target work then. Usual eight meter range, firing pellets on a cold December day. I'm talking minus. I'm expecting big things though from this. After all, it is a rifle barrel and has those wonderfully clear fiber optic sights on the front and the rear. Sadly, the only adjustment is on the front for windage, but it's the grouping we're looking for because all the rest could be adjusted for by adding different sights either on the bottom rail or on the top dovetail rail. Anyway, here are the target results.
not bad at all and a real comfortable gun to use. You naturally have to come off target to reload via the bolt where you wouldn't with a small semi-automatic CO2 pistol. So a longer process and a retargeting required between shots. So overall, what do I think? Feels nice and solid. A little front heavy. More powerful than most CO2 pistols I shoot, but still not enough for any serious pest control. I like the idea of the dual magazine, but then again, I like it when companies try something different. It's pretty accurate, and it's nice to shoot. It is also quite a lot of gun for the budget price tag, which includes magazine, single shot tray, etc. Overall, I quite like it. And I also like the silencer fitting, which is standard half inch UNF and would be great to keep the noise down from the neighbours. Mission accomplished.